Good morning, this is August 16th, 2020. Welcome to our service, online service for Knox and Ephraim Scott Presbyterian Church in Bidak, Cape Breton. My name is Reverend Brian McLeod. Welcome to our service. May God bless you. May you enjoy our service. I call the worship this morning is from James chapter one. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God. The Father is this. To care for orphans and widows in distress and keep oneself unstained by this world. Amen. Let's bow our head in prayer. Let us pray. O Christ our Lord, as a Canaanite woman brought her dreams, daughters need to you, overcome stigma and rejection to you, to do, confident of your healing in her life, we bring the needs of others in prayer, those for whom pain is constant companion those who daily live with chronic illness or ill health, those who struggle with the confu confusion and stress of mental illness, those who care for and treat people who are ill, sometimes have agonizing decisions to face, those for whom treatment is not available or affordable, and for ourselves and our weakness. To all your children everywhere, Lord Jesus, bring healing, bring peace. And Father, we continue to pray for prayer of confession in unison. Merciful and wise God, in your presence we confess that we have not lived as you have taught us to live. Forgive us those times when we have not welcomed others into our community, and those times we have avoided others because something about them made us uncomfortable. Forgive us the ways we have judged unfairly. Reveal to us our own prejudice that separates from us from others and failure to seek your goodness in those who seem different from us. Amen. Receive the assurance of pardon. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. Amen. Our mission moment is 40 years of partnership in Maritus. In September of 2019, the Christian Church of Marinus celebrated a milestone the 40th anniversary of their autonomy from the Church of Scotland. The Prussian Church and Canada's partnership with PCM began in 1981 with the appointment of Reverend Brian Crosby and continued through the years with 11 Canadian Presbyterian servant and ministers and music consultants. Today, our partnership continues through an annual grant sent to Formation Bibliotheque at Theological at Maurice, FBTM, Theological Training Program for over 1,700 Christians. FBTM Director Reverend Maurice Devon gravely acknowledged that due to the generosity of the PCC, FBTM has been able to continue its ministry in spreading the study of God's Word among Christians. Maritus, Presbyterian Share works with mission partners around the world. Amen. Good news. I invite everybody, if you have a Bible in front of you, please turn to Psalm 133. And we'll read this together. If you'd like to read out loud or just listen, I invite you now. How good and pleasant is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil, oil poured on the head, run down the bread, beard, run down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hebron were fallen on Mount Zion, or as the Lord bestows his blessing even in life ever, forevermore. Amen. Our next reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, reading starting verse 1 to continue on 6 to 8. So if you have a Bible in front of you, please turn to Isaiah chapter 56, reading verse 1, and continue on 6 to 8. This is what the Lord says, Maintain justice, do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. And foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants. I will keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and I will fast to my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifice will be accepted on my altar. For my house will be called the house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, he who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others 
to them besides was already gathered. Amen. Again, I invite you to turn to Romans chapter 11, reading verses 1 to 2, and continue on 29 to 32. Romans 11, 1 to 2, 29 to 32. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite, Israeli myself, a descendant of Abraham, from the tribes of Benjamin. God did re not reje reject his people, whom he had foreknown. Don't you know that what scripture says in a passage by Elijah, how he appealed to God against Israel? For God's gifts is called are irrevocable. Just as you, who were at the time disobedient to God, have not received mercy as a result of disobedience, so the two have now become disobedient in order that they too may receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For God has bound every one over disobedience that he may have mercy on them all. Amen. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, reading verses 21 to 28. Matthew, chapter 15, reading verses 21 to 28. Please turn to your Bible and listen to God's word. Thanks be to God. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. The Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out at, uh, after us. He answered, I sent only to be to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, please help me, she said. He replied, It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it into the dogs. Yes, it is Lord, she said. Even dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Amen. Father, may these words be acceptable, acceptable to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The faith of the Gentile. A little boy wants a bike for Christmas badly, but the kid is real bad seed, and he knows it. He writes a letter to Jesus, Dear Jesus, if I get a bike for Christmas, I'll be good for a whole week. He thinks about it, crosses over what he wrote and says, I can't be good for a whole week. I'll be good for five days. He crosses that out and writes, I'll be good for four days. Then he thinks again and again and says, I can't do that. He gets down to one day and says, I can't even be good for a day. Then in frustration, goes in his mother's room, gets a statue of Virgin Mary, wraps it up in a blanket, puts it in a paper bag, throws it in a closet and says, Dear Jesus, if I don't get a bike for Christmas, you'll never see your mother again. We live in baffling times. The world around us looks very different from how it did even last year. This time last year, you could see people live in a life where you could go to the beach, restaurant, and not feel afraid. Culture has splintered into multitude fragments of microculture. Technology has shrunk and stretched out experience of space and time. Life can end up feeling like one great impasse, especially if you want to do the right thing to lead a good life. But how can you define good? It's not how someone else defines. So in other words, how you define good is not necessarily how somebody else will define it. We're all caught up in the tension of life 
in the global village we call Mother Earth. While we enjoy all the luxuries of life, we need to realize we are draining the resources of the world. The gap between the rich and poor has grown so big and so much, especially in this last eight months. We celebrate disposable stuff, but we yearn for a time of something last, lasting longer. No one knows what to believe. At a time when we've got more questions than answers, more and more people are setting out on the great spiritual journey, sensing that there is something not in their life that they really do need. Need of belonging, the need to believe in something. So here are some things to ponder. What are we to do? Where are we to turn? How are we supposed to act? Who are we to follow? In today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew, we encounter the story of the faith of the Canaanite woman. When you read this passage, there's one part of it that seems like an insult to the woman, but it's not. Jesus encounters this woman who begs him to cure her daughter. He initially refuses her request by saying, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss the dogs. Taken out of context, it does seem like an insult to the woman, her status, but Jesus uses this as a metaphor meant to explain the priorities of his ministry. He's also teaching an important lesson to his disciples. Jews during this time in history referred to Gentiles as dogs. What they meant is that they were wild, not approachable, unclean, very unclean, very unclean spiritual. If the Jews in presence of these Gentiles, this could make them ceremonially unclean. And see, Jesus' ministry was about doing the unexpected and turning the people, turn the people on their heads. You see, in this passage, Jesus is no longer in Israel, but is in Tyre and Sidon, which at this time was a Gentile territory. When the Canaanite woman approached him and repeatedly asked him for healing, the disciples were annoyed and asked Jesus to send her away. At this point, Jesus explained his current ministry in a way that both the woman and the watching disciples could understand. He wasn't referring to this woman as a dog, either directly or indirectly. He wasn't using a nickname or racial slur, but making a point about the priorities had been given by God. He was also testing the faith of the woman and teaching an important lessons to his disciples. So here are a couple of things to ponder about the Gentile woman. This request the woman is for her daughter, not the mother. It's for her daughter. The mother is presenting a request to Jesus and asking him not for her own benefit, but for her beloved daughter. She took the problem of her daughter as her own, now presenting herself before the creator and master of the universe. And what did we say religion was? Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for the orphans and widows in their distress and keep oneself unstained by the world. Further on, we read that Jesus answered her, not a word. How difficult it could be for the woman to accept that her only hope of healing is being beginning to fade away. To make things worse, the disciples urged Jesus to send her away. Get, get her away. We don't want her. Jesus further told the woman that he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She could have easily considered Jesus a cold and heartless teacher by the way Jesus had treated her. With all these, you can see the persistent prayer of this woman 
instead of turning away from Jesus, she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. This is kind of attitude to God is looking when we pray. God puts more importance on building our character. Problems should lead us towards God, not away from him. The reward from this encounter with the mother is that her daughter is cured. Faith can move mountains. So the way to grow in our faith is to exercise it. Especially by reaching out to others in love. The safari hunter was startled by the loud screeching of a bird. When he caught the sight of the bird, he was darting back and forth around his nest. He was perplexed by all the racket until he noticed, noticed a huge snake moving up the tree. The hunter could have easily aided the bird with one shot from his gun, but he was captivated by the drama before him. As the snake slithered up the tree, the bird became silent and flew from the nest. It now seemed as though the snake would dine without resistance. But before the reptile could reach the nest, the mother returned with a leaf in her beak. She carefully placed the leaf over her babies and flew to another tree. The snake raised his head to strike, but then hesitated. It froze as it had met a foe. Slowly, it recoiled from the nest and went on its way down the tree. The puzzle hunter related the event to the native Africans when he returned to his camp. They laughed with enthusiasm as they explained this unlikely victory of the bird. The leaf that the mother had used to cover the nest was poisonous to the snake. What looked like nothing more than a leaf was in fact a life-saving shield. Our faith at times feels as flimsy as a leaf. But God's word reminds us that it is a shield against attacks of our serpentine enemy. So here's a question to ponder. Why do some people have a strong faith and others have a weak one? Why do some find it easy to believe while others find it hard to believe? You know, Jesus wants every one of us to have a strong faith. One that not only sees us through the rough times in life, but shapes us and makes us more and more like Christ. The Bible commands us, grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Second Peter 3.18 Jesus has given us everything that we need to grow spiritually. He has given us the Bible. He explains us how we should believe and how we should live. Jesus has given us a gift of prayer. So you can bring all petitions and requests before God. Faith is taking the first step when you don't see the whole staircase. Martin Luther King Jr. Your faith is never taken from you. You may just resist it from time to time. Your faith is a gift of grace. You get to choose if you want to receive it or not. You may not even want to resist faith because you do not trust how long it will stay with you. But when you learn to surrender and allow yourself to open, then faith will only multiply and manifest itself in your life more, not less. This is how your faith stays strong. When you walk away from and his teachings, this is why. Your faith becomes weak. When you walk away from God and his teachings, your faith will become weak. There's a story told of a blind boy who was flying a kite, enjoying this pastime along with others of his own age. The passerby, known him, and wanted to give him a gentle teasing, said, Where's your kite? You don't know whether it is on the ground or up in the sky. 
Oh, yes, said the blind lad. I do know. It's not quite as far height up in the air. How do you know that? asked the friend. You can't see it. No, replied the boy. I can't see it. It is true. But I can feel the tug of the string. You see, it's not the quantity of faith, but the quality of faith that is important. So faith that has its principle of life is a faith with God in it. So it's not the quantity, but the quality. Do you today have this faith? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I would ask you to bow your head in prayer for a prayer of dedication. Help us to be generous givers, dear Lord, both for offering our lives, that we make a difference in your, this town and this community and around the world. We ask this through your Son, our Jesus Christ, who gave all that he was, that we might know in life all its fullness. Amen. Let's bow our head in prayer. Let us pray. Live in Christ. So many different pre people reach out to in times of desperation. With so many different needs. Yet you have compassion for them all. Lord Jesus, know both struggle and joy in our lives. This day we set before you our many different hopes and concerns. Fill us with your compassion as we pray. For all that we are and all that we do, we wish we could do and all we long for. We pray for everything we work for in our church and community, for everything we hope for in the face of so much change. We pray for the choices we face in our country and in community, in our homes and workplaces, for all the responsibilities we bear in our different roles. We pray for the troubles that weary us, the situations that puzzle us and uncertainty that surrounds us. We remember before you each situation that worries us and each person we care about. Father, today we especially pray for all the people who are going through this pandemic. Be with them, Father, and show them your path. Father, we pray for all the churches around the world, especially persecuted churches. We pray for Knox, our sister church of Ephraim Scott. Father, we pray for all the young people in this community. It's been a hard last six months, it's been so hard for them. Give them some time of peace and joy. Father, we pray for all the people who are alone right now, especially feel alone during this time. Father, we ask people to reach out and give them phone calls. Just tell them, that, you know what? You're not alone. We're here for you. No matter what in our life, we know that you're always there for us. Father, we pray for the ministers and pastors around this community. We pray for Reverend Mary Jo Harrison, Mary Reen Harrison, Deacon Wally Ivnan, Pastor Phil McCormick, Reverend Cameron Brett, Reverend Glenn Davies, Reverend Louis Haas, Reverend Corey Stewart, and Reverend Peter McDonald. And all the priests and clergy of Cape Breton. Father, you're Leaders of your church right now are in such uncertainty. Just give them guidance. Live in Christ, you are the source of peace, a new possibility for us. Help us trust in your grace for today and tomorrow. Fill us with the strength and hope we need to walk with you, 
united in love. We pray today especially for the EHS, the RCMP, Royal Canadian Armed Forces, the Volunteer Fire Department, McLeod House, Alderwood, the hospital, and the frontline workers. Grant that we will trust that promise and live lives was testified to the gracious mercy and love you offer us each and every day. We pray these things in the name of Christ our Lord and friend. And continue to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Just before we get to our uh, benediction, here's something to uh, remember for today. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into the presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is He that made us. We are His. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts of praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. May God bless you. May you have a wonderful week. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace. Never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day go now in faith steadfast strong and true know we will guide you in all you do go now in love and show you believe reach out to others so all the world can see god will be there watching from above go now in peace and in faith and in love amen everybody have a good week god bless you see you soon <laughs>